River Region Evening Edition is made possible through the membership support of viewers like you with additional support from Country Insurance and Financial Services and WSIL TV3. Now on Saluki Sports View, we take air with SIU's competitive aviation team, the Flying Salukis. We show you some of the top SIU athletes for the month, plus we talk live with junior thrower Curtis Weidman as he heads to this weekend's Bill Cornell Spring Classic. Broadcasting live from the campus of Southern Illinois University at Carbondale, Saluki Sports View starts right now. Welcome back to Saluki Sports View. I'm Cindy Kessler. And I'm Danny Valle. Tonight on our monthly sports program, we show you the top Salukis of the month and see a few others take to the sky. But first, Saluki fans had one last chance to say goodbye to the men's basketball team. Here's Matt Ferguson. Part of Watching uh, Desmar Jackson put on a show for the fans, dunking it, stealing it, scoring, doing everything, rebounding, leading the team. Looking forward to the next step of my life. It's been great, man. It's been a pleasure. Saluki fans will say goodbye to some of the players who made their season so eventful. Devontae Drinker, Desmar Jackson, Kobe Long, and Bronson Verhines have all played their final game in a Saluki uniform. Drinkard and Jackson will try to further their basketball careers. Long will enter the U.S. military, and Verhines will go for his masters at Loyola. Appropriate, since it was a Saluki win over the Ramblers that led to the team's dramatic finish. After being picked to finish third to last in the conference preseason poll, the Salukis hit a hot streak, winning seven of their last ten regular season games. In Arch Madness, they beat UNI thanks to Desmar Jackson's 21st half points and were one game short of facing the undefeated Wichita State Shockers in the conference championship game. I, I love playing the, the uh, big crowd like that, great atmosphere, you know, uh, it's great, you know, that gets my body going, you know, my uh, adrenaline rushing. I have the best regular hand right now. Now, the Salukis gave the fans one last chance to thank some of the players who made their season so dramatic. And it's up to a young roster to take their place. I think 70, 65, 70 percent of our team next year is going to be freshmen and sophomores. And, but I like that because I think that's how you eventually win in this conference. And Tyler's hitting big shots already as a freshman, so next year it's going to be even better. Sean, he's doing things that a lot of freshmen are doing, rebounding, scoring, things like that. And Bo is just a monster. He's a monster on the boards and rebounding and all that. It's just him in the game, changes the game alone. And with them coming back, I feel like it's going to be even better because they're going to have more experience. Jackson leaves SIU as one of the best scorers in school history, but it didn't come without a little fight. You know, we butted heads, but at the end of it all, he knew I loved him, and I knew he loved me. Only thing those guys got to keep doing is just stay focused, you know, just rely on each other, you know, just be as close as you can and just pay attention to Coach Henson. You know, I think that'll be all right. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Matt Ferguson. The Young Dogs roster would be wise to listen to their coach for leadership as they are expected to have just three seniors. Those players combined for just two starts all of last season. Usually only birds soar the skies, but these dogs have something special. This past week I got the privilege to attend a flying Saluki practice and see what all of the buzz was about. From simulators to soaring the skies, the flying Salukis do it all. They've won many national and regional titles. These students show that it takes much more than a will to fly to be a part of this team. Uh, what it takes to be a flying Saluki is an extreme amount of dedication and time effort into uh, becoming the best that we want to be, and that's to be national champions. Each competition tests the skills and determination of the student aviators. We have many different events that are very challenging and demanding, and uh, test really a pilot's knowledge and capability and skills. Um, we have flight events, we have a series of ground events such as E6B, SCAN, and uh, aircraft wreck, which I'm a part of. Practice takes up most of their time, but head coach Nathan Lincoln believes it's time well invested. There's a lot of places that when you interview and you have on your resume that you are part of an, uh, a flight team uh, that they know that the commitment that you put in, the hours that you've put in, and to be successful at it, it takes a, a lot from each individual. The flight team even let me go up for a ride. Oh, 
what made me want to join the flying team is that I've been uh, competing in, in athletics all my life, and I found out about the flight team, and it's basically where all everyone, the collegiate aviators, can come in and basically arena for us to compete, and that's what really pulled me towards being on the flight team was being being able to compete against so many different people from around the United States. With each passing year, the flying Saluki show that they are a force to be reckoned with. We've had multiple awards over the years. Um, even at regionals, we won mul uh, multiple events during that competition. Uh, we've won top, pa uh, top male, top female pilots multiple times over the last uh, 15 years that I've been involved with the team. So a lot, of, a lot of awards have been handed out to our team members. Even though the school year is coming to an end, the Flying Salukis are already preparing for next year's competitions. We're working hard and preparing for our next upcoming Nationals competition in Ohio State, and we're hoping to make SIU and everyone involved at SIU very proud. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Cindy Kessler. The Flying Salukis will seek another national title at, at Ohio State May 12th to the 16th. SIU will be hosting the regional competitions next October. And now we have a tennis star who traveled across the Atlantic to play here at SIU. And we made a list of the top five Saluki athletes this month and many honorable mentions. Don't leave us just yet, we're just getting started. Governor Pat Quinn delivers his annual budget message this week in Springfield amid a grim fiscal outlook for the state. Agencies may see their budgets cut by nearly $3 billion if lawmakers reject extending the temporary income tax as other spending pressures continue to mount. On the next WSIU in Focus, we'll get reaction from Southern Illinois lawmakers to the governor's speech and their thoughts on what happens next. Tonight at 9.30. WSIU and the Carbondale Public Library invite you to the March Community Cinema film, The Trials of Muhammad Ali, directed by Bill Siegel. The film will be shown at 2.30 p.m. on Saturday, March 29th in the community room at the library, located at 405 West Main in Carbondale. Learn about Ali's journey from his Louisville roots through his years in exile to receiving the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Join the discussion with moderators Novotny Lawrence and John Holmes. Another exciting episode of Scholastic IQ is coming your way when O'Fallon challenges Hamilton County in a high-stakes second-round match. Northern Spy, Granny Smith, Jonathan, O'Fallon George. Apple. That's correct. <laughs> Think you can outsmart these whiz kids? Tune in and play along here on Scholastic IQ. Sunday at 5. Welcome back to Saluki Sports View. We show you the top Salukis of the month in just a little bit, but first, we take a look at a Saluki tennis star who came across the Atlantic to play for the dogs. The Saluki men's tennis team goes into the weekend winners of seven of their last eight matches, including four wins at home and three on the road. A catalyst for the streak comes off the racket of rising tennis star Johnny Rigby. I, I went to Wimbledon to play the finals to represent my county, which is Lancashire. And then, yeah, I made, the, I made the last 16, so that was really good, playing, at, playing on the grass at Wimbledon and everything like that. By the age of 14, Rigby was living a tennis player's dream, competing for a spot in the historic tournament. But it wasn't Rigby's first sport. I tried out a couple of different sports. Uh, I was swimming for a little bit, and I didn't really like that, so she took me along to tennis, and then that was something which I picked up pretty quickly. In the Rigby clan, rugby was the sport of choice. His father David played for 13 years as a fullback on four different teams, and his grandfather Jeff Lyon played for 11 years, most of them with the Wigan Warriors. The Rigbys had little experience with tennis when Johnny picked up the rackets at the age of six. I think my mum played a little bit. Uh, my sister played recreationally, but that's about it. There's not, not really been much history of tennis in my family at all. His mother wouldn't let him go to rugby practices, so he opted to stick with tennis, a decision that's made him one of the best in the conference. What I like about tennis is that it, it requires a little bit of everything, like, you know, it's an all-round sport, so that, I think that's what I enjoy about it the most. Rigby showcased his talents on a YouTube video, which helped him reach a long-term personal goal. Moving to America was something which, uh, which I wanted to do. I spoke to a, like, a recruiting agency and they said put a video out on, on YouTube. So it was exciting like, when, when I was getting emails from, from coaches and stuff asking 
asking if I'd be interested in going to their school, so it was, it was a lot of fun. I contacted him through YouTube, um, saw the video at first on YouTube, and then he signed up with a, a recruiting agency, College Prospects of America, and that's how we started talking. In his first season in maroon and white, Rigby racked up 17 singles wins with a 6-0 mark in conference play, earning him all Valley honors both in singles and in doubles. This year, Rigby achieved his goal of playing in the top single spot for the Dogs. But with his talent and confidence, the England native has a chance to soar even higher. I'm playing good and I'm, I'm feeling confident at the minute, so I hope I, can, I hope I can carry on playing well. I've achieved my goal, so anything else beyond that is just a bonus. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Danny Valle. Rigby and the Saluki seek their fourth straight win this weekend when they head south to Mid-Tennessee State. And March is almost over, but it already feels like spring is starting to warm back up. It really is. First it was snowing, then sleet. I swear there's going to be a twister down here soon. Hopefully not, though. But Hopefully last not. month there have, been a, there have been spurts of hot streaks. We call these streaks the Saluki Top 5. Jumping into our countdown at number 5 is freshman high jumper Kyle Landon. The Chester, Illinois native made waves by setting the fifth highest jump in SIU history and took home first place at the conference indoor championships. Moving forward to number four is junior thrower Sophia Lozano. The third year Saluki had a breakout season in maroon and white, winning the conference's hammer throw and qualifying for nationals by a single centimeter. Lozano placed 13th in the weight throw at the national meet. Meeting us half midway through the countdown is number three, Junior tennis player Natasha Tomashima. The Brazilian native helped the Salukis win 10 straight games, tying a school record. Tomashima is 13-7 and seven on the year and has won eight of her last 10 singles matches. Reaching the number two spot is sophomore Josh Freeman. The thrower from Fox Grove, Illinois, broke SIU's indoor shot put record, which hadn't been broken since 1984. He also qualified for nationals where he placed 10th in the shot put. Rounding out this month's countdown is sophomore diver Sherry Zhang. Zhang earned first team conference honors and won the Valley's Diver of the Year award. The Hubei China native qualified for the NCAA championships where she placed third in the three meter dive. Zhang became the first Saluki diver to earn All-America honors since 1985. Some of the best of the rest include basketball star Desmar Jackson who led the dogs in multiple offensive categories. Senior Kenya Culmer completed her final indoor season as a Saluki, qualifying for nationals and finishing 16th in the high jump. And Shea Harris' Saluki softball career has started hot as she ranks in the top 10 in the, na in the nation in RBIs per game. And our number one Saluki says her performance in the NCAA championships is all thanks to her teammates. I think that's why I have like I can get third place. If like even without without them, I don't think I can make in NCAA. So they really encourage me and push me a lot. So push me my best. And she needs to improve her um, confidence. But she shows me she going to there. So very soon and next year, I believe the champion is she. Zhang is just the fourth diver in school history to earn All-American honors. She is the first Saluki All-American diver since 1985 when Wendy Lucero won the NCAA championship in the one-meter dive. With many Saluki athletes already making headlines, the season is off to a great start. But that's not all that's been going on. Baseball, softball, and both men and women's tennis teams have been going strong. All that and more in just 90 seconds. On today's Community Dateline, an American Red Cross blood drive is this Sunday from 7 to 11.30 a.m. at the Blood Donation Center in Paducah, Kentucky. Give the gift of life by donating blood. For more information, call 217-345-5166. The 2014 Art Starts production of Beauty and the Beast runs this Thursday through Saturday at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. at the Cultural and Civic Center in Marion. 140 talented Southern Illinois children are working hard to make this family-friendly production one to enjoy. For tickets or more information, call 618-997-4030. The Civil War Part 3, Copperheads, Contraband, and the Rebirth of Freedom takes place this Thursday through Sunday in Booth Library at Eastern Illinois University in Charleston. The symposium promises a weekend of history, commemoration, education, and revelation, as well as some good old-fashioned fun. To register or for more information, call 
348-8161. An American Red Cross Blood Drive is on Monday from 2 to 6 p.m. at the Memorial Public Library in Collinsville. Donate blood and help save a life. For more information, call 618-397-4600. If you have an item of community interest, please send your mail or email two weeks in advance to the address on your screen. The Saluki baseball team returns to action this weekend as they start conference play against the Missouri State Bears tomorrow at 635. The Salukis are coming off a close loss to Murray State, losing 7-6 last night in 10 innings. They are just 4-7 of seven when playing away from home this season and are in Game 2 of a five-game road trip. One of their players, Ryan Casillas, is making the best of his final season as a Saluki as he leads the team with 17 runs batted in. I think it always helps when you're driving in runs. I mean, uh, runs are what win ball games. so if I can keep doing anything I can to help the team and if, if that's what it, if it's RBIs or it's hits or it's anything, then it's obviously going to help the team. It's big for us. The baseball team plays their series against the Bears all weekend in Springfield, Missouri. Then they travel to O'Fallon on Tuesday to take on the Missouri Tigers. Winning nine of their 16 games this month, the softball team plays a doubleheader at Missouri State this Saturday. After a three-game winning streak, the softball split a doubleheader at St. Louis University last night. After Slew's pitcher threw a no-hitter in the first game, the Salukis lost 1-0. In the second game, pitcher Katie Bertelson gave up only one earned run as the girls came back to win 9-2. This was her third game pitching in her last four outings. Outfielder Kaylin Harker also had a great game as she moved up to the number two spot in the lineup for the second game. She responded with a 3-for-4 effort with four RBIs. Harker was one of five Salukis to hit a double that night. The women's next home game will be April 1st against Murray State. The Saluki men's tennis team is on the road and are riding a three-game win streak. SIU began the spring season losing four straight matches, including an opening day loss to Oklahoma State. Since breaking the four-match slump, Southern has won seven of their last eight matches heading into the weekend. Saluki men's tennis coach Dan Nelson says the team is in the right stretch at the right time. We went on the road and, and won two, and that was great. Uh, Nashville uh, won another one at home uh, against Vincennes, and, and we're, we're on a bit of a streak right now. Three matches against three good teams, three days in a row. I think it's a, a, a very good warm-up for the NBC tournament. The Salukis head south to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, to compete at the Mid-Tennessee State Shootout, starting tomorrow and ending on Sunday. The women's tennis team is in action as we speak. They're facing the St. Louis Billikens today in St. Louis. This is the second match for the Salukis over the past two days, including their 5-2 win over the Evanville's, Evanville's Purple Aces yesterday. The team will have another busy weekend as they head to Kentucky to face Louisville and Liz Lindsey Wilson. Facing tougher opponents has always been a priority for the team this season. Such a great record, 9-5 but yet not winning that conference tournament. We knew we needed to schedule harder teams. So, you know, that was the plan. We don't expect to have, you know, as great of a record this year, but, but I think that playing the more nationally ranked teams is going to get us ready for conference competition and especially the finals. The women's tennis team faces Northern Iowa at home for their next conference game on April 5th. With the track and field outdoor season starting this weekend, we bring in one of their stars to tell us what's in store. Curtis Weidman joins us live in the studio next on Saluki Sports View. Next time, you won't believe the Treasures Antiques Roadshow found in Baton Rouge. This one is the best I've ever seen. This is a condition 10. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Really? Oh my goodness. I had no idea. Don't miss our visit to Louisiana next time on Antiques Roadshow. Tonight at 7. We have an artist who's also an art historian from Murfreesboro, who blends in her acquired knowledge of academics into her artwork. And another artist from Carterville, who strongly believes in the circle of life and gets his inspiration from drawing Madeleine. Tonight at 9.
Governor Pat Quinn delivers his annual budget message this week in Springfield amid a grim fiscal outlook for the state. Agencies may see their budgets cut by nearly $3 billion if lawmakers reject extending the temporary income tax as other spending pressures continue to mount. On the next WSIU in Focus, we'll get reaction from Southern Illinois lawmakers to the governor's speech and their thoughts on what happens next. Tonight at 9.30. Welcome back to Saluki Sports View. I'm Danny Valle, and joining us right here, Curtis Weidman, the thrower from Evanston, Illinois. And thank you for joining us, Curtis. Thank you for having me, Danny. Thank you. And uh, wow, that's a big ring right there. What's that ring at? Uh, well, uh, my freshman year when I got here, we uh, won conference, indoor conference to be exact. Um, it, was a, it was a crazy uh, time for us uh, to walk in and, you know, to have a team uh, that great to pull off a, a championship like that. was It was surreal for us, so just kind of support it. Yeah, the track team has been hot the last couple of years, and uh, you also were hot this year, too. You had a breakout year. You won a uh, hammer throw title. Talk about that a little bit. Oh, man, uh, it, it was great. You know, when you put in reps on top of reps, and, you know, when you put in the hard work, it's always good to see the results. And um, I stayed over the past three summers just putting in work and training and training and buying into the program. And, you know, things finally just started to take their path for me, and, you know, I was able to, you know, do great things this indoor season. Now with the indoor season over, now it comes the outdoor season. The Bill Cornell Spring Classic this weekend, tomorrow. What are you looking for personally? Personally, I'm looking for uh, big PRs. You know, uh, I set myself up in a, in a good path to do great things. Hopefully I can break the school record coming out in hammer and also in disc. Um, and also get a good PR and shot. You know, uh, this is going to be a good outdoor season for me, uh, leading off an of indoor some great things happen indoor, but now it's, you know, my time to really shine outdoor because my events are, you know, more outdoor than indoor. Talk about the difference between throwing indoors and outdoors. I'm, I assume that outdoors you have more of a free space to move, which you have, you know, more of a throwing motion. I mean, talk about the differences. Well, indoors is always great because, you know, you have, uh, you have two events. You can focus on two events, and then you also don't have to worry about, you know, getting hot or getting cold or worry about the weather. So you always, uh, you know, have a good temperature. And um, you can only really focus on two, uh, two events versus outdoor. You have shot put, outdoor shot put, hammer, as well as discus. And, you know, judging off of the weather, you may never know what the weather may bring. It may bring snow. It may bring uh, rain or may lightning, and you might have to uh, sit out for a little bit. That's what happened to us when we went to regionals last year. We went to Texas, and uh, uh, Hammer got postponed for a day just because of the weather. So you never know what outdoor may bring when indoor. It's just, uh, you know, it's always good. And speaking of bringing stuff, you brought a little souvenir with you. Talk about this glove. Who, what, and why? Who, what does that mean? Uh, it actually means I, I was at practice one day, and I had to remind myself uh, the who is for who I do it for, and that would be my family. You know, my mother is a big inspiration in my life. What I actually, uh, you know, to be great and uh, to leave something behind when I leave here and why I also just want to leave a big legacy. You know, I didn't want to follow my brother's footsteps of playing football in uh, northern Illinois. So I came here and uh, hoping to leave a legacy behind the track. You play football. What position did you play back in high school? Actually, I played running back and outside linebacker. I, I miss those days. Every time I see somebody playing football, I actually really want to go back to it. But I have some unfinished business to do with track, so we're going to handle that so far. Were you heavily recruited for more football or for more track? What actually, I was never recruited for track. I was actually uh, going to Illinois to play football. And uh, happened just so happens that the coach that was recruiting me got fired, so everything kind of slipped through the cracks. And then Northern called. and. I was going to Northern. I had my heart set on going to Northern to play for them. And uh, John Smith, the coach here for the track team, just called me. And, you know, he asked me to come in and check out the program. And just so I did. And after the first visit, I just was ready to sign. Now, you know, you're a junior this year. Next year, you're going to be a senior. And it's going to be one of the strongest throwing classes. You know, talk about being one of those leaders uh, on the track team in the throwing department. You, uh, it's always good to have people look up to you. You know, when you reach a certain plateau to stay humble. Also, when you know you have freshmen coming in, they're going to look for you for guidance. And it's always good to, to give back because when I was here, the, the main people that really gave back to me were the seniors and the juniors. And I just want to play my part and, you know, participate and do the same thing for the freshmen and the sophomores so I can leave, you know, a, a good image uh, for myself. And, you know, if I can help any, anybody in any way, that would be great for me, you know. So I'm always here to help and, uh, you know, better people. 
All right, one last question before we go, and this is a curiosity question. You talk about you haven't been recruited for track. You weren't recruited a lot. And you know, how did Connie Price Smith hear about you? Uh, videos. Um, they actually looked online and seen a couple videos, and one of my high school coaches uh, called down here and got things set up, and we set up a meeting. And when, once she heard about what I had did in, in uh, high school, she just kind of was really ready to get me. All right, well, thank you for joining us here in the studio. Good luck this weekend. Me, thank you. We'll be back with more Saluki Sports View as Saluki Sports are in full swing for the weekend. We'll take a last-second look at their upcoming games next in Sports View. Every year, the funniest people in America take over the Kennedy Center for the biggest night in comedy, the Mark Twain Prize. This year, Tina Fey brings home the prize and brings down the house. Join Steve Martin, Betty White, Steve Carell, Jimmy Fallon, Tracy Morgan, and many more as they celebrate Tina Fey, the Kennedy Center Mark Twain Prize. Friday at 9. Sunday nights, take a break and escape with an all-new season of Call the Midwife. All I care about is you. Stop talking. Her roll hands will be here in less than 15 minutes. Then, Jeremy Piven returns to Masterpiece. We will face whatever comes our way together. Mr. Selfridge. All-new season starts Sunday at 7. This year, WSIU-TV brought you Saluki Basketball with your favorite Missouri Valley Conference matchups. We are honored that you tuned in to watch your SIU Salukis play right here on WSIU-TV. These broadcasts would not have been possible without the generous help from our sponsors. For more information, visit WSIU.org slash Salukis. Welcome back to Saluki Sports View. Here's a look at the weekend ahead. Baseball squares off with Missouri State tomorrow night. It'll be a three-game series that lasts through the weekend. It also marks the first day of the Bill Cornell Spring Classic for the track and field team. And men's tennis will also travel to Tennessee for the MTSU shootout. On Saturday, the softball team will have a doubleheader against Missouri State. Women's tennis will travel to Kentucky to face the Louisville Cardinals and Lindsey Wilson. And on Sunday, women's golf is home for the first time this season. Their Saluki Invitational runs until Monday. Thank, Thank you for joining us tonight. Follow us on Facebook at River Region. I'm Danny Valle. And I'm Sydney Kessler. Saluki Sports Field returning on Thursday. Thank you. River Region Evening Edition is made possible through the membership support of viewers like you with additional support from Country Insurance and Financial Services and WSIL TV3.